Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an entitled father gets his pants pulled down in public and publicly humiliated. Right now, I'm feeling proud of myself for doing something wild. This last weekend, my wife and I decided to visit her family. They live in a much larger city than we do, and we go now and again to break up the monotony. On Saturday, my wife and her sister wanted to go shopping at one of the larger malls in the area. Not wanting to do nothing alone, I tagged along. At this point, while listening to their girl talk, I decided to grab a bite, so I told my wife and headed to the food court. At this point, the lunch rush was still going on, so the place was fairly packed. I decided on Chinese food, a place I'd been to before, so trusted that the food was good. So I got in line to wait like anyone else. This particular restaurant was pretty simple. It had four cashier lanes and grills behind it where you could watch the cooks make your order while you wait. But being a Chinese place, it took longer than the typical fast food place, so the lines were moving slowly. While waiting, my phone died. I simply forgot to charge it earlier. So I started people watching the crowd to avoid getting bored. Nothing out of the ordinary until I noticed entitled dad with two boys a little bit ahead of me in the line next to me. The two boys, maybe around 11 and 9, must have been getting impatient because they would periodically start to screw around or bug Entitled Dad, occasionally pushing each other around or asking when they would have food. Entitled Dad looked like he was growing more agitated by the minute. Every time he had to turn to deal with these two, his face grew redder and redder. Understand, dear reader, that this was a busy, loud area, and they weren't being super loud, so they didn't really attract attention yet. I did, however, have to turn away now and again to avoid being noticed, though. The trouble started when Entitled Dad finally reached his turn. The girl politely did the usual and asked him for his order. But instead of just ordering, Entitled Dad started to complain, mainly about how long he and the two boys were in line for. She did her best to be polite, but he just kept going for a few minutes. By this time, the gentleman behind the trio was also getting annoyed. He noticed me and gestured to Entitled Dad with a, you gotta be kidding me, look. So I just responded with a shrug. As far as I knew, he wasn't wrong. If Entitled Dad was in such a hurry, why not just get your food and be done with it? Eventually, the girl at the register was able to get the order. I was now second in place in my line and right next to the two kids by this point. I could hear the angry Entitled Dad go into a tirade about the performance of the restaurant and insist that if it wasn't for his kids wanting it, they would have gone to a better place. About how this other Japanese place was better, but was currently closed because they had to suffer through this. Entitled Dad even started to insult the poor girl behind the counter. The gentleman behind Entitled Dad and the two boys tried to tell Entitled Dad off, telling him that they're just doing their best, but Entitled Dad shot back with a typical, I'm a paying customer so I can do what I want, excuse, and kept going. The girl was obviously growing upset as Entitled Dad was bullying her, and I could see tears start to form in her eyes. Entitled Dad just wouldn't give her a break. The gentleman behind the trio was also looking like he was getting ready to throw punches. At this moment, I thought that I really wanted to do something, but I didn't want to get into a fight, even if I had backup or ended up being the backup for someone else. That's when I noticed it. Entitled Dad was wearing cargo shorts, the kind that never seemed to fit right. I thought for a second and found an alternative idea. I found myself just reacting and the whole thing took only a few seconds. <laughs> I stepped forward in between Entitled Dad and the two kids, grabbed both side loops of the seat of his pants and yanked as hard as I could. Without stopping, I immediately ran for it. I had to push through a lady in the last line, but I made it. I heard a lot of screaming behind me, but not wanting to get pummeled by an angry Entitled Dad, I didn't even look back. I ran to the other side of the mall where my wife was still shopping with her sister. I knew my wife enough to predict what stores they would be in. I felt safe enough in a girl's clothing store next to my wife, so after I caught my breath, I just started laughing. My wife asked WTF and I just told her I'd tell her later. I didn't want to spoil their shopping, so I spent the rest of the time keeping an eye out for an angry Entitled Dad. 
I did spot them at one point, now with a blonde lady and a little girl in tow, but that was it. I was lucky enough to avoid them. When we decided to go eat, the lunch rush was pretty much over and I just had to know. I went back to the Chinese place and luckily the young girl was still there. So I purposefully waited behind an extra person for a chance to talk. When I got the chance, I asked her what happened to Entitled Dad. She told me that someone yanked his pants down mid tirade. The guy who did the deed took off, but Entitled Dad couldn't catch him because the gentleman behind Entitled Dad took the opportunity to push Entitled Dad flat on his butt. <laughs> the gentleman just insisted that he was trying to catch the culprit and missed. Lol. Then, Entitled Dad, being the official center of attention, just grumbled for the rest of the time. He got his food, paid, and sat down on the opposite side of the food court somewhere. I wanted to laugh, but just in case, I never told her it was me who did the pantsing, even though I really wanted to do so. I just took my order and joined my wife and her sister for lunch. I told my wife later, and we had a laugh. She scolded me for pulling such a stunt, but was proud of me for finding such a funny method for helping the cashier. OP, not all heroes wear capes. Our next Reddit post is from Ducking Pancakes. Okay, let's start. For background, I went to school with Entitled Kid a very long time ago, and somehow I managed to get on his bad side. Entitled Kid didn't seem to like me and would use any possible excuse he had to torment me and make school a living heck. Before we started sitting together in this particular class, he had already been picking on me for years. So I wasn't excited and kinda expected this from him. Entitled Kid wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed, and he often copied other kids' answers. I didn't want to make his attitude towards me any worse than it already was, so I would just play along and act like I didn't notice him looking over my shoulder. This went on for a while until one day, teacher finally held us both back after class. This is basically how the conversation went. I've noticed both of you are getting similar scores on tests and are writing down the same answers in class. Would either of you like to admit to anything? As I didn't want to be called a snitch, I kept my mouth shut and hoped the other kid would learn his lesson. But nope, that's not how it works apparently. OP has been stealing my answers for months. It's so annoying. Actually, it's the other way around. Why didn't you say this before? She's just trying to blame it on me. It basically ended up with me in detention and entitled kid running free because the way it looked was as if he told the truth and I turned the tables on him. We were still sitting next to each other in class, so he continued to copy my work. Then it came to the next test. I had heard something online about someone who got their revenge by ticking all of the answers wrong in pencil, then rubbing it out last minute and rewriting them in pen, and that is exactly what I did. I ticked every answer far from correct, to an extent where some of the answers were even quite dumb. And then, around 5 minutes to the end of the test, I went through again, rubbing out my answers and ticking the correct answers in pen. Also, intentionally covering most of my answers so that he struggled to copy them. Entitled Kid's expression was a mixture of anger and defeat, as he knew he couldn't do anything now. It was priceless. After the test, he came up to me looking pale and worried and asked me why I did it. I acted like I had no idea what he was talking about and he stormed off angrily. We handed in the tests and when they came back, I got a decent score as usual and he failed miserably. The teacher even made a comment on how messy it looked when he scribbled out his answers. I bet you think this is the end. No, we're only getting started. This is entitled mother's time to shine. It wasn't long after the test, maybe a week or so, when me and my parents were called into the school to attend a meeting with teacher, entitled kid, and entitled mom. This is how it went. The teacher said, Entitled mother has contacted us about OP bullying entitled kid. OP, do you have anything you'd like to say? <laughs> yes, what exactly did I do? You made Entitled Kid fail his test. 
Could you explain how OP managed to do that? Entitled Mother goes on to explain exactly what I did, and teachers suddenly realized who was really cheating off of who. So, your kid was cheating? No, he already knew all the answers anyway. It's just a waste of his time. Yes, Entitled Mother actually told teacher it was a waste of her dumb kid's time while basically admitting that he cheated. But he was copying the answers anyway? Entitled Mother didn't really have much to say after that. Entitled Kid was given a detention and left in a huff. And I got an apology from teacher for the detention I was put in. Our next Reddit post is from It's a Me Honey. So a few weeks ago, I was in a grocery store, right? Nothing unusual. I had a particularly rough day and so I wasn't in the mood for dressing up. Just a blue t-shirt from one of my old school's shorts and sneakers. I had just finished getting everything I needed when I got in line. That's when I saw Entitled Parent. Now, this woman only had two things in her cart. A toddler, a little boy who was probably around three, and way, way too much booze. I mean like the whole cart section of the cart was absolutely filled with bottles. Also worth mentioning that this woman, probably mid 30s, was wearing a hot pink crop top. All right, that's pretty bad, but it's not my business and I'm not in the mood to argue with someone. She pays for her things and begins to leave, so I begin to do the same. I'm at the card ship reader when I feel a tap on my shoulder. I turn around and the trouble begins. Hello ma'am, can I help you? Yes, I was wondering if you could change your shirt. Me, dumbfounded. I'm sorry, what? Well, blue is not a girl's color and I don't want my son to get the wrong idea about what is acceptable to wear. I'm sorry, I will not be doing that. If you want your son to learn those types of things, you can do it at your house, but I'm allowed to wear whatever I feel like wearing. Oh, don't be so unladylike. Just change out of that shirt. I will if you can give me one good reason. Blue is not for girls. Okay, well, crop tops aren't for witches, but you're here. At this point, I just made sure I had everything and walked away. I heard her mutter something to the cashier as I left, but I couldn't hear her and I honestly don't care. How is OP supposed to change her shirt at a grocery store? <laughs> like, who goes to the grocery store with an extra shirt just in case? Our next Reddit post is from It's Fish 20 So, my significant other and I live in a high rise in downtown Chicago. The way our building is set up, only the corner units get balconies and the rest just have windows you can open. These balconies are 100% private and part of your unit. I pay for this and it's great being able to go outside and not have another person sitting just to the left of me. Our neighbors who were an elderly couple moved out in April and the unit has been bought by a family of three. The kid is about three and so far has been pretty quiet or at least we can't hear her through the walls. Anyway, last night, I was coming in from the basement storage area with my dog and our small grill because it finally is warm enough to cook outside and enjoy it. The mom was in the hall and asked where I was going with the grill as it is a fire hazard inside and I mentioned my balcony. Well, that's when she instantly begins her tirade about not being able to get to any of the public balconies on the floor. She had been trying all the corner doors and all were locked, mine included. Now, mind you, this is maybe the third time I've met this woman. She has lived here for about two months now and she has been trying to get into our apartment to use the balcony. Our door is always locked. It's locked the second one of us gets home and stays locked. I tell her that the only public balcony type space is the roof deck and she yells at me, says in her contract she has a balcony she can use and demands to let her use mine. I just laughed and at this point, my neighbor across the hall was coming home. He has another of the four balconies and stops to say hi amidst her yelling at me. She asks who he is and he says her other neighbor across from me and she goes into the same spiel with him. We both explain to her that no, she has no such thing in her contract or lease and if she has an issue to go talk with the door staff and ask them to go to management. She got mad and went inside at that point and my across the hall neighbor and I just laughed about it and talked about the new Zelda game coming out. 
Our next Reddit post is from Oceanic Blue. So my husband A and I were invited to Entitled Mother's Kids' first birthday by Entitled Mother's husband. It was all well and good, until Entitled Mother gave us the rules a couple days before the party. They were normal rules, no drugs or alcohol, decent attitude, except for one rule. It said, anyone attending this birthday party must not have passionately hugged for the month prior and must not have passionately hugged for a week after. My husband and I were weirded out by this since it was almost all adults attending. Most were married. Husband and I were no exception. And like any normal married couple, passionate hugging was a thing we did. We decided not to go since us going would break that rule. On the day of the birthday party, Entitled Mother sent out a group text to us and a bunch of other people asking where we were. A good amount of people said they were breaking that rule. Entitled Mother got mad at all of us for being sinners and blocked all our numbers. Two weeks later, she was found to be five weeks pregnant. I'm just <laughs> bewildered as to how she thought she could possibly enforce that rule. That was r slash entitled parents, and this is r slash puppy bloopers. <coughs> Dog, man. What do you want? Oof. A oh, woof. Arr. Well, come here. You want to play it? I don't have time to play dog. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Ow, my ears, dog. Fine, fine. Let's go play. Jeez Louise, dog up.